How you doing, everyone? Today, we're going to take a quick look at Firestarter. This is based on the Stephen King novel of the same name, directed by Keith Thomas and starring Zac Efron and Ryan Kira Armstrong. Zac Efron plays Andy McGee, who was part of a secret government experiment run by an organization called DSI. I don't believe the movie ever mentions what that stands for, or if they did, I missed it. And these experiments gave him the ability to do all sorts of crazy shit with the power of his mind. During the experiments, he met a girl called Vicky, played by Cindy Lemon. They fell in love and had a child. That child, played by Armstrong, not only inherited their mind powers, but turned out to be a pyrokinetic. And parenting is never an easy task, but it's made even more difficult when your child can start fires at random. And they are trying to live a somewhat normal life while also keeping her powers in check and avoiding getting found out by that secret government organization. First of all, I have not read the book, so I cannot speak for how true this is to the source material. I'm purely judging the movie on its own merits. And I'm very glad I didn't even have to leave the house to watch this movie because it was in theaters and on Peacock, as was the original 1984 movie. And I hadn't seen that either, so I figured, what the hell, I might as well watch both. I do think the 1984 movie has the stronger cast. If you haven't seen it, just go look up the IMDb page and prepare to be amazed at all the people in this movie. That said, I do think Ryan Kira Armstrong in 2022 is a better actor than Drew Barrymore in 1984. She got better, obviously, but at the time, ooh, oh, she, she was not there yet. I also think the 2022 film has a leg up in the casting of the John Rainbird character, who is an assassin that has been sent to hunt down the McGee family. In the 2022 film, he's played by Michael Greyeyes, who is a First Nations Canadian. In the 1984 film, he's played by George C. Scott, who is very much not that. And I looked up on Wikipedia, is this character supposed to be Native American? Yes, yes he is. Oh, goddammit, 1984. Putting George C. Scott in a ponytail does not make him look like a fucking Cherokee. It's also clear that the 2022 version was trying to do something different, which I do appreciate. There's no point in just remaking the exact same movie. The story has a much more linear flow compared to the 84 movie, which had a lot of flashbacks. The part of the story where Andy and Charlie encounter Irv Manders, who's played by John Beasley in this version, plays out very differently. The second half of the 84 movie has Andy and Charlie captured and held at some government facility. The 2022 version takes a different approach there. Rainbird's story also takes a very different direction, and his motivations are a bit different. And this time around, when Andy uses his mind powers, he bleeds out of his eyes instead of his nose. And I'm assuming that in the 84 version that was simply because that was a much easier practical effect. But anyway, now that I have seen both takes on this story, which one is better? Uh... Neither, really? Gun to my head, I might say the 84 version is slightly better overall, but I don't think either of them were particularly good. Maybe this story just doesn't translate well to the big screen. I don't know. Given that the 84 version wasn't received very well at the time, it is a perfect target for a remake. There's not much point in remaking a movie that was already good. You're just setting yourself up for failure there. Unless you're Steven Spielberg remaking West Side Story, in which case, yeah, you can somehow improve on a former Best Picture winner. Sure. Keith Thomas is not Steven Spielberg. The original Firestarter definitely had room for improvement. I'm not sure this version improved upon it overall. There's just not nearly enough in this movie that's actually happening. The characters aren't terribly interesting. Every child in this movie who is not a named character seems to be a militant asshole, which is kind of a trend with Stephen King. Without giving too much away, I personally could have done without the bit with the cat. And maybe the fact that I watched this at home contributed to this a bit, but it felt to me less like a theatrical film and more like one of the old made-for-TV Stephen King movies, but with a slightly higher effects budget. The 1984 movie was definitely a product of its time, but at least it felt like a theatrical film from 1984. This did not feel like a theatrical film from 2022. I do not think this is worth watching on the big screen at all. Uh, if you have Peacock, won't cost you anything but about an hour and a half, so sure, give it a watch. And I do hope we see more of Armstrong, because that girl has potential. She just needs a better script. And that's all I have to say about Firestarter.
Till next time, take care.